Oh, you guys are in luck. Today, I am letting you in on some secrets. All right, not really secrets, but I've gotten this question so many times in the last couple years that it's about time I make a video about it and answer that question. And the question is, how do you make those little circle blow up uh, highlighter icons in your tutorials? That's really cool. I want to be able to do that too. How do I do that? So I am working on a video here that I'm going to be posting on my YouTube channel. And the program that I actually do that in is not DaVinci Resolve, surprisingly. It is a program called ScreenFlow. And ScreenFlow is the program that I use to record my screen. Now, it is only available for Mac. Really easy to use. Really easy to make quick highlights and stuff like uh, the circle that you guys all want to know about. And any of the other blowups, a lot of times, I just do that in ScreenFlow because it's quicker. I don't have to keyframe anything. It's just really fast. So let me show you how that works and how I do that right here in ScreenFlow. And then if you're on a Mac, you can go pick up ScreenFlow and you can do the same cool things that I do. All right, let's check it out. So this is ScreenFlow that we're looking at right now. I have a project opened up in there that I've already recorded the screen for. Now, what's cool with ScreenFlow is I can record my external microphone, which is up here. I can record my screen as well as my screen audio. And right now, if I just bring up this little guy, you can see I'm actually recording the screen right now. It gives me a little levels uh, of my monitor. Uh, or of my microphone. So we've got all this cool stuff that ScreenFlow can do to capture the screen for all my tutorials. So I'm just gonna close this guy. Now, when it comes to creating those cool highlights, there's a lot of great, easy, basic tools here in ScreenFlow that allow you to do it real easy. So for example, we have a part right here where I wanna make a little highlight on the screen. So here's the part. I gotta put in some headphones because I can't hear anything. Hold on. Let's roll the tape. You wanna make sure that your mixer's open. So at the top here, we have mixer. Okay, so I just called out the mixer there, and I want that to highlight so that those people watching, the viewers, can see where I highlighted it, right? So in order to do it, I'm going to select my screen recording. The bottom one here is my screen recording. The top one is my dialogue for my external mic, which is up here. So I want to highlight it, so I'm going to select my screen recording. And now the tools that we have available to us here in ScreenFlow are across the top here. And there's one called uh, Callouts right here. So if I click on this one, it's called Callouts. Now, I already have a preset, so when I want to create this effect, all I have to do is say Add an Action, click on the little thing that's going to give me my presets, and here I have a few presets that I use all the time. These are the blow-ups and enlargements that I use all the time. It's a custom square highlight where I can select the square I want to highlight, the red circle that you guys want to know about, and this will just make a red circle around the cursor. I have a red circle zoom, which gives you a red circle around the cursor and zooms it up. I have a highlight square where I can select an area and it'll blow it up for me. And I don't have to keyframe anything, it's real easy. You can see on the screen, there's this little yellow uh, icon right here. If I click on it, now I can adjust all these things here. So right now we see that my mouse is highlighted and in my preset, this is kind of how I built it, right? Down on the bottom here is basically your fade in and fade out. So I usually do 0.2 seconds. So as I play through the clip, you'll see on the screen here, it's going to fade in. And you can kind of see it there, but it's a little hard to see, right? So some of the other things we can adjust, right, is the opacity, right? Do you want to see the background a lot or not? Then we can zoom it up right here. We can make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to put it back to 100% uh, for the moment. We can add a border, right? So if I bring this up, you see it just makes the border around uh, my mouse cursor a little bit bigger, right? So we can size it however we want. And then right below that, I have the option to add an outline, right? So in this case, the default color happens to be blue. And if I just click up my pixel size, you can see we now have a blue border around the, the cursor there. So I can, you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. I can click on the color and it'll bring your, your color panel. Mine's red. You can make it red or whatever color that you want. And uh, then I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And now we have a simple fade in to a highlighted area. Let's say I want to, you know, make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to increase my border size. And now I have the highlight area, right? And if I want to zoom it up, again, right here, we've got zoom up. I can just click, hold, and drag. And you can make it as big as you want. You know, it's up to you. Let's say I want to make it this big, right? As we go up to select the mixer there in DaVinci Resolve. The other thing I want to do is just have it fade out at the very end. So under build right here, I have out duration. I make that point too. It's good enough. It's good to go. And all the settings that you save in here, you can um, save as a preset. You can save it and then you only have to click the preset and boom, there you go. It's going to drop it on your timeline. 
Now under highlight, I have the mouse cursor, but you could do a foreground window, which you can draw the window yourself. Um, you could do a freehand window. That's draw yourself actually. Um, so you've got different options on how you can set that up, right? So now if I play through it, here's what it looks like after making those few simple changes. You wanna make sure that your mixer's open. So at the top here, Okay, so let's say maybe uh, it didn't quite line up where I wanted it to. If I zoom in on my timeline here, I could just grab this, which is my effect, my zoom in, and I'm just going to drag it down to where I want it to start. So let's try maybe there. You want to make sure that your mixer is open. So at the top here, we have mixer. Okay, and then let's say, okay, I don't need it anymore. I want it to fade back down. It's as easy as coming and dragging the end of my little callout clip here. Just drag it back. And that's it. I mean, it's just that at the top easy. top here, we have mixer. And in our mixer, we have... And let's say I want to have another one for the EQ. Instead of doing it all over again, I could apply the preset if I have it, or I could just click it, Control C, gonna click over here, Control V, boom, it just pasted it. And now I've got that same effect twice in a timeline. No keyframes, nothing. I just pop it on there really quick and really easy. Check it out. So at the top here, we have mixer. And in our mixer, we have our EQ right here on my vocal track. So I'm gonna. And that's it. That is how I create those cool pop-outs and, and blow-ups and things. Now, the preset, just to show you how it works, again, I have my uh, track selected with my screen recording. I'm going to come up. I'm going to add an action. Click on my preset. I'm going to say circle cursor red zoom up. And now when I play through it, I double-click that to open up my EQ. You can see it zooms up on the screen there. And it's as easy as that. I can then just drag it as long as I need it and it's gonna fade in, fade out, everything is set. It's really quick and really easy. And I just find it faster to do it this way in the screen flow, go through it real quick, drop in my couple of uh, you know places that I wanna create an enlargement or zoom in or draw your attention to something. And then I can export this out and then I bring it into DaVinci Resolve and then start editing my whole project together with my talking head, like you see right here, um, as well as the screen recording, which already has all the blowups and everything in it. Now, the other cool thing that I do uh, very often with the screen recordings is in screen flow again, right here, um, I want my mouse cursor to highlight or light up when I click the mouse button, right? To kind of help draw the viewer's attention to whatever I'm trying to show in the video in DaVinci Resolve. So to do that, Really easy. Again, I have a preset made for it, but I would just click on my screen flow track or on my screen recording track. This time I'm going to come up to this icon right here, which is the screen recording itself. And now you can adjust all these different things in here, your mouse pointer zoom, you can make it bigger, smaller, you can change what the mouse cursor looks like. But the effect that I use is called radar and you can change the size of it, the color of it, the animation, all these different things and uh, and change it and make it look however you want. Now I have a preset, so I would just click on my presets. I have two different ones here. I have default mouse plus radar. So I'm gonna click on that and that's it. It's applied. It, anytime I click the mouse, it's gonna have that radar on there. I don't have to go through and, and change it. And let me play through a little bit of it here and see, you can see what it looks like. Three to 4,000. Okay, so you can see I just clicked there on the EQ and you saw those little radar uh, things light up, right? Just to help draw the viewer's attention to those specific parts that I'm talking about in the video. So I use that one all the time and that one will apply to the entire screen recording. It's not like an individual thing that I can move around. It just applies to the whole thing, which is what I want in my case, because I want to draw the viewer's attention to the things I'm clicking on and the things I'm talking about in DaVinci Resolve. Because if I didn't, how good of a tutorial would it be, right? I do have a preset for the square ones to blow it up or to just highlight it and dim the rest of the screen. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm just gonna show you that real quick. So let's say I wanna highlight the EQ in this particular screen here. I'm gonna select my screen recording. I'm gonna go back to my call out. I'm gonna go action, which adds the call out onto the clip for me, the screen recording. And then I'm gonna go select my preset. And in this case, I just wanna highlight because I know if I blow the EQ up, it's gonna be too big on the screen. So I'm gonna say custom square highlight. Now I can use a circle and just draw and paint it in, or you can use the square. So all I have to do is come and highlight the EQ like this. And now when I play through it, I've already got a fade in and a fade out on this call out. And this is what it looks like. Up to 8,000 is kind of where we wanna increase, but you could just take fades in, fades out, really easy. And say I decided I want to zoom this up, right? I could click on the call out and I can just come up into the zoom up and I could just zoom it up. 
It's as easy as that, right? So maybe I'm like, oh, I do actually have some room. I can zoom the EQ up that big on the screen. And then I can keep myself in my talking head down over here. So really easy to kind of make quick adjustments here in ScreenFlow. This is why I love using ScreenFlow as my screen recording software for all my DaVinci Resolve tutorials. I've pretty much been using only this since the beginning. I did try the, um, I did try OBS once, but I just found it a little too cumbersome. And I just found that this is way easier uh, and faster for me because I got used to it. I'm sure OBS is, is great and it's fine if you're familiar with it, but this was easier for me. So ScreenFlow is awesome. I, I use it all the time for every screen recording that I do. It's a great program. If you guys need a screen recording program and you're on a Mac, I would highly recommend ScreenFlow. Not sponsored. This is not, I've never even talked to anybody at ScreenFlow, but I do love the program. It does do a good job. Um, I'll drop a link in the description below if you want to jump over and check it out. And then I'll update my version, like maybe every two versions or something like that. Um, generally, I'm not using a ton of features, although you could edit your entire video right here in ScreenFlow. Generally, I don't. I'm going to do my, uh, you know, my, my call outs and things and highlighting on the screen in ScreenFlow. I'm going to export that out, bring it into DaVinci Resolve, and I make all my videos in DaVinci Resolve otherwise. And I can continue to add in some more things in Resolve, like, you know, maybe different kinds of blow ups or different ways of, you know, making things look interesting. I definitely add a lot in DaVinci Resolve. But for this, just the screen recording itself, I use ScreenFlow because it does a great job. It's easy. And I just, I have no problems with it. It runs great on my Mac. So that is it. I hope you guys found this helpful on how I do these cool little, uh, you know, animations and blow ups and stuff on my videos here for DaVinci Resolve. If you have questions about ScreenFlow, you want to know a little more, maybe you want to see another video about something, drop a comment down below. Let me know. I'm happy to make videos about this and uh, help out the community so you can make your own tutorials in DaVinci Resolve. Or maybe uh, you're just recording screens for something else. Uh, maybe, I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea what you might be doing. But if you need a screen recorder, ScreenFlow works awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next DaVinci Resolve video. Peace.